Sorry about that one, Chief. <sighs> no problem, where you been? It's all right, uh, just finishing my paper round. You work in two jobs? Yeah, things are, things are tight these days. The missus wants a, uh, a, an engagement ring, so... Oh, Gertrude, you know. she makes a good curry, though. She, she, she does, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the curries exist in this, this era. Been, food has existed for a long time, Chip. Nah, but like curries, like... Curry might not be on the menu, but I'll tell you what is an unsolved murder mystery. That is absolutely correct, Callum. All right, Chip, talk to me. We have got the murder of a six-year-old girl called John Benet Ramsey. Family of four, we mm -hmm. have a mother, of an actual former beauty queen known as Miss West Virginia. Okay. The father, John Ramsey, and then a nine-year-old brother. Okay, this, this is a famous case now. Yes, this absolutely. Is, this, is, this, is, this is a big case. This, is, this has been covered a few times, yep. but it's actually one of my favorite ones. So I'm actually quite looking forward to going to well, this. Well, I think once we're done here, the case might be solved. Oh, well, I absolutely hope we so. Have a, we had a 100% solved rate, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right, let's set the scene. We're in Colorado. Mm -hmm. It's 1996. You would have been two years old. Out in Boulder. Yeah. Great place, by the way. I went to Boulder once, but You've... I didn't do this. I well, hope not, because you would have been two. Well, it, look, if that if I if I did do this, then we've solved the case, and it's another <laughs> hundred percent record for the fellas. Let's run you guys through um, the story and uh, the timeline of what happened and uh, the murder of John Bonet Ramsey. So the worst bit is, it's actually all kicked off on Christmas. 25th of December on Christmas Day, they've yeah. gone. To, they've gone around to their families, uh, family friends, the Whites. They've gone over for a party. They've returned home at about 9 p.m. The father's taken John Bonet Ramsey to bed. Okay. Everything's everything seems normal, right? Yeah. That's it. That's the end of Christmas Day. Bang. Boxing Day. It hits the fan. So at 5:52 uh -huh. in the morning, yep. Patsy, the mother, mm -hmm. comes down the stairs and finds a ransom note. Okay. Right, um, as soon as she finds this ransom note, now this ransom note is really interesting. We'll get into that once we've gone through the timeline. Yes. Right? But she calls the police, John Bonet is missing. She's been kidnapped. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kidnap. And we've got with. this ransom note, what do we do? Help us out. So at 5.54, Patsy then decides to call round the family from the night before. The they white had family. On Christmas day, the white family. Okay. Which, which is I mean, weird. It's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit weird. I don't know why you would call them straight after calling the police. Maybe she was just panicking and wanted someone around ASAP to come back. That's true. So 5.59, the police turn up. Only seven minutes later. That's pretty rapid. That is fast. Fast response time. Anyways, they go ahead and they do their first sweep mm -hmm. of the gas, of the course. house. Usual protocol. And then at 8 a.m., okay. a couple hours later, the first detective arrives on the scene. This is where it's... But I get serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because at this point, around 10, they start to notice that the dad, John Ramsey, is now missing. Suspicious. Just for a couple hours, he just disappeared. Maybe he went B&Q. So then, around 1 p.m., mm -hmm. the dad, John Ramsey, appears, of course. Back from B&Q. Yeah. At this point, the detective decides, right, let's do a sweep of the house. Usually, you'd think it would be just the police that would do this, but for whatever reason, the detective has decided to include the family on this search. Now, yeah. the weird thing is, John Ramsey goes straight to the basement. That's the first place he goes. Shock, he finds John Bonet's body down there. And doesn't he say that she's found her before he's turned on the basement light. But what's even weirder about it is the fact that she was found with a white sheet over her. Mm -hmm. So how did he know that, well, one, that she was underneath the white sheet and two, the lights weren't on. He also, the first thing he does is then goes and moves the body, picks her up and takes her upstairs mm -hmm. out of the basement. Now, I'm sorry, but if, it, 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 if this is your reaction, this is your first, you know, or, or, or the time that you've seen your dead daughter, obviously shock, horror, whatever it is, but why would you instantly go and mess with the crime scene? I mean, she was found with ropes around her like wrist, but it was over the clothes, which is a little bit weird because it's a lot easier to get out of things mm -hmm. if it's over the clothes. Um, and then there was also some duct tape as well. And then not only that, but then the detective also moves the body as well. 
Is that not just... Why are you not moving the body? Leave the body. Sounds like a bit of incompetence. <laughs> Let's go into some of the details because there's a bunch of stuff in this story that just one is really weird. Um, two, just really suspicious of quite a few people actually. And there's just incompetence everywhere. Yes. Now, first thing we have is the phone call that Patsy makes on Boxing Day mm -hmm. at 5.52 a.m. She connects to a dispatcher by the name of Kim Archuleta. Okay. She tells her about the ransom note yeah. and the kidnapping. Please, what's going on there, man? We have a kidnapping. Please, 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 either the dad, John Ramsey. Yep. Or, remember, there's the fourth person, which is the brother. Burke. Yes, it could be him. It could be right. either of those. It could be both of them. Kim does stand by the fact that there was a change in tone of her voice when she thought she'd hung up. Well, uh, Patsy's tone Patsy's of voice Patsy's tone of voice right, changed, right. okay, which... It's a bit sus. Like, it's you, sus, you, right? You're putting on an act. You're putting yep. on an act. You think you've hung up. And it's like, oh, yo, so actually... Like, Not only that, Kim was actually never interviewed by the police and also put on a gag order by the judge. So wait, the dispatch, the, the Kim, dispatcher, uh -huh. the lady on the other end of the phone, yep. first of all, was never interviewed by the police, despite never. the fact that she's come out and said that it was actually a really sus phone call, um, because usually people stay on the phone for the entire, uh, the, the entire time until the police arrive. And that is actually one of the other points. She didn't stay on the phone. Yeah. She actually just decided to hang up and that's on rare. the dispatcher. And that is, yeah, that's quite rare to happen. See, that is, that's so weird. And then Kim is essentially being told, you can't say anything about this. Yeah. Which is just weird. Yeah, they've silenced though. So in 2016, there was a CBS documentary mm -hmm. that actually went over the final six seconds and enhanced the audio. Try and figure out of what that I'm phone saying. Call. Hello, I'm Patsy Ramsey. Daddy's not here, but this is Jean Bonnet. She's four, Burke is seven. First of all, we had a woman's voice, which was suspected to be Patsy saying either, what did you do? Or help me Jesus. Patsy? It, it wasn't that clear. Um, and it's easy to like make a mistake or just assume that certain things were said. Um, but the help me Jesus appears to be like the best That case. could possibly have yeah. been said, you know, in that situation. Another voice, a male voice, which is actually suspected to be the dad, John Ramsey, and it says, we are not speaking to you. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if they are saying, because they think they've hung up the phone here, so who are they exactly speaking to? Because it's not the police. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think I hear a man say, we're not speaking, speaking to, you. to you. And then a third voice is suspected to be the brother. Right. Uh, and Burke. Yes, Burke, which is, he said, what did you find? The weird thing about this, though, mm -hmm. is that Patsy had said that Burke was asleep during this time during originally. everything, yes. So why would he be there? So, well, he's supposed to be asleep, and mm -hmm. supposedly he wasn't woken up until the whole thing was sort of like done and dusted, yeah. right? Until everything was finished. The ransom note. Yes. This bit is arguably the most valuable piece of evidence in this whole case. So juicy. It is, yeah, it is very juicy. There's yep. a lot of stuff to unpack here. Patsy, as we know, at about 5.52 in the morning, she comes down. That's when she makes the phone call to the police. Yeah. But she also saw this ransom note. Okay. Now, this ransom note is very long. So we're going to spare the viewers of reading out the whole thing, but we will just pick out a few of the most important parts of it. One thing that was asked for in this note was $118,000. Right? Very specific. It is very specific. Um, they wanted the first $100,000 in $100 bills. Yeah. And then they wanted the other $18,000 in $20 bills. Um, what's also weird about the number $118,000 is it's also a very similar to the amount of money that the dad, John Ramsey, yeah. was given as a bonus at the end of the year. What, like a little Christmas bonus? Yeah, you know, at the end of every year, a, a lot of workplaces will give out bonuses to their employees. Now, I, I haven't been given no Christmas bonus. Certainly not from this show, mate. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not going to lie. If you're getting 118 grand as a bonus, you I imagine you, you got some brains. Yeah, you got something. You're doing pretty well. So it, it, the family was a wealthy family, billionaires, yeah. you know, the, the lot. Well, right? when you're entering your kid into beauty pageants, pageants. Like, you got money, man. Yeah, you got some brains. Yeah. Another thing that was actually said on this uh, ransom note was that they were going to call them at between 8 and 10 the next day. Okay. Um, but also, they said that, I hope you're really rested because this is going to be really exhausting. Something something along those lines. That, and that's such a strange thing. Why, why would you say that to someone? Why would you say like, oh, this is going to be exhausting, so make sure you're rested. That was pretty much what they said, right? Like, that's just, it's just really like creepy. Any deviation of my instructions will result in the immediate execution of your daughter. Okay. You will also be denied her remains for proper burial the two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like you, so I advise you not to provoke them. Huh. Two gentlemen, huh? Another part is, they go on to say, speaking to anyone about your situation, such as the police, FBI, etc., will result in your daughter being beheaded. Oof. Right? If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If you alert bank authorities, she dies. Yeah. First of all, it was a long ransom note. Yeah. It, you know, it, they, they did some analysis on it and it said that it would take 21, just over 21 minutes to write which, this thing out. Which is mental, you know. And that was, wasn't that just actually writing the note. They yeah. actually also have to think about the note, what they want to say and that, you know. Right. Not only that, but there was also found next to it two practice attempts at writing the note. Okay. okay. And that was right in the Ramsey's house. Yes. It was done actually on Patsy's notepad. With her pen. With her pen. Ooh. Like, another obvious point that I think we have to mention here, Chip, right? Okay. So, um, this ransom note is about a kidnapping. Yes. Right? So, what kidnapper would write a ransom note when, in reality, the body's just in the basement the whole time? If, that makes like, no you think sense. Of it like that, they've left the body in the basement, they've come upstairs, they've just grabbed, you know, the mother's pen and pad pen and pad and spent ages doing this by the practice way practice one note nah nah dog that another one yeah nah Rubbish. messed it up and then gone 21 minutes on the final one and all, it all, out. all while you know the kid is downstairs dead. dead would you not have written out it at home written out the ransom note at home and it wear your own gaff right and then come with it in your pocket or something it killed the child yep and then just placed it somewhere obvious, the kitchen countertop, wherever, yeah. instead of going there and going, actually, hold on, I should probably write a ransom note. You wouldn't write it in the house on the you're spot. kidnapping the girl from. Freestyled it. Yeah, they freestyled it. Literally did, SBTV. That CBS documentary, a fella named Stan Burke, mm -hmm. right, said that 76% of that ransom note was completely unnecessary. This here, if you alert bank authorities, she dies. You told us early on, follow your instructions or she'll be beheaded, executed, beheaded. So why do you have to keep telling this over and over again? 76% of this is extraneous. Really, 76%. it's not necessary. To me, they're trying to sell this now. So most ransom notes, they're very short, direct, to the point. Not only that, but they reckon that that ransom note could have been written in like four or five lines, but they've yeah. just gone on and on and on. Also, one of the hardest things to do with a ransom note is actually figure out how old and, and really give like a profile of the person, but they do reckon that the person was aged 30 plus. Okay. They also did say that a lot of the wording and phrases in the ransom note came across very like maternalistic as well. Um, not only that, but the pen and paper were actually put back where they were afterward. So, which is what a mother would do. It is, it is. I just have a lot of questions around this mm, ransom Not note. looking good for Patsy right now. It, it is not really not looking great. So the ransom note, that's as weird enough as it is, yes. right? Um, but obviously this is the Fellas Mystery Channel and things only get weirder over here. Now, when they found John Bonet um, dead, they found her with a rope around her neck. Okay. And they just assumed that it was asphyxiation. 
which is essentially being strangled, right? Because of the because of the rope. Now, she also had a rope around her wrist, like we mentioned right at the beginning of this, um, that was over her uh, clothes. But it turns out all this rope was almost like it was just for show. They managed to find the murder weapon, Yes. right? Now tell, tell them about the murder weapon because okay. this so, is interesting. Instead of the strangulation, which you already spoke about, they actually believe that the you know, she died from a blow to the head. Now, the blow to the head was it was strong enough to, you know, crack the skull, but not tear the skin. So there was actually no DNA found on the murder weapon, which I do believe to be a torch. Now, to prove the flashlight was the murder weapon, the doctor actually brought in a young boy to con like conduct a demonstration of to like reenact it, like reenact it to right. show what a torch would do to mm -hmm. a six-year-old girl's skull, and it it perfectly matched up. The exact same, you know, exact A size young crime. boy as well. I mean, yep. look, Which the it, brother is there. We, that's exactly what I was thinking. We spoke about the phone call as well. Mm -hmm. And why would they lie about the uh, the bro brother being asleep? If he was on that phone call, again, it's just, it's interesting that it, it really was a young boy that did the, did, did the demonstration yep. and it matched it perfectly yeah like similar, so it does raise some strength. eyebrows huh? yeah you're probably thinking where is the dna you know you've got a girl that has had her head smashed head smashed in uh by a flashlight or so mm -hmm. they believe it was by a flashlight now there was no dna on that for the reasons that you had mentioned earlier but there was actually unmatched dna found in john benet's underwear but they simply couldn't match it to anyone so you know, what is that? Is that a sign of the times or? I don't know. It's inconclusive. There's not much to go off of it, but ultimately it didn't lead to anything. Let's talk theories, Chip. Let's let's try and figure out what happened here, okay? So there's two main theories. Yes. We've got the intruder theory. Okay. Which roughly, you know, it, it, it is what it says on the tin. They reckon someone came in somehow and did the job, wrote the ransom no, left, right? But then the other theory is called the family theory. And that one is, uh, again, suspecting the family did the job. Now the intruder theory is all based around on somebody, you know, staking them out, mm -hmm. watching them and figuring out like when they'll be asleep, when they'll be dormant, when can, when's an opportunity to break in. Yeah. Once they've broken in, obviously the plan was to take John, John Bonet Ramsey, maybe kill yeah. her, put her in the basement, yeah. Then go upstairs, write the ransom note with the pen and the pad. Yeah. And then leave. One of the big things about it was actually a window in uh, that led down into the basement, right? Right. And this window had actually been broken two years earlier uh, by John Bonet, the the father. No, sorry, John Ramsey, the father. But there were cobwebs in this window ah. that were still there when the police went around. So if you're squeezing through, I'm t this window- and this is a small window. This right? is a small window. Okay, so first of all, it can't be a big person no. to fit through this window. We're talking, we need to be like- Small. Crimes. Yeah, like yours, yeah. you know. PC crimes fit through PC, that window. Yeah, no exactly. To find those still intact, either the intruder got really lucky, I suppose, and managed to dodge the cobwebs, or he didn't um, break in at all. I don't know. We're not we're here at the Fellas Mysteries. We're not a big fan of the. Intruder I, I'm not theory. a big fan of the Intruder Theory. No. I'll be honest. The Family Theory. Yes. Chip. This, this one, I, one, I like this theory. I like this too. I like this theory. But you guys at home, you decide what you think about this theory. Now we've got Burke. Yes. The brother. Yes. Now he's been popping up a little bit uh, here and there. A little so bit suspicious. A little bit suspicious. Then. But this is where it gets suspicious. Okay. So we need to talk about the pineapple. All right, these people, they don't know about the pineapple. Oh, no, you guys about to learn about the pineapple. Okay, so the pineapple was found in John Binet's system, but it wasn't digested. Okay. okay. And the reason why that's important is because um, the parents said that they put her to bed at 9.20, okay? And by then, the pineapple would have been digested. Yeah. So she had to have eaten the pineapple later than 9.20. Okay, and now there's the possibility that she got up in the middle of the night and ate the ate the pineapple. Yeah. But the other theory is that the brother Burke um, was eating pineapple, and pineapple being pineapple and milk is actually John Bonet's favorite thing to eat, and that was confirmed by the parents, right? All so right. she's seen that the brother was ha was having some pineapple in a bowl, um, gone and nicked a bit of pineapple. Okay. Dirty thief. 
Don't don't nick don't nick the pineapple yeah, out yeah. of the ball, right? And then Burke has gone and hit his sister over the head with the torch. Unintentionally killed yes. his own sister. Or maybe there. intentionally. It wasn't enough it, to break the skin, but it was enough to break the skull. Which makes it sound like it's an accident because yeah. like there was no DNA on the murder weapon because of that reason. Yeah. Probably hit her on the back of the head, maybe the sweet spot. You know, Didn't realize it. He's, he, he was only nine at the time. Yes. And at this point, it is full panic mode for the family. Yeah. Um, they have instantly gone into cover-up mode because ultimately... Now they've just lost their daughter, yeah. you know, and right now possibly the, the son is going to be, you know, put away, even if yeah. he's nine. Yeah. He's going down. The mother, she's rushed upstairs. She's panicked. She's gone. She's grabbed her pen and her pad. Yeah. She starts writing out one. She scraps feels it. she don't like it. She scraps it and it's all adding up because she's got time, right? She does. Because she's in her own house. Not only that, but Patsy was actually wearing the exact same clothes as she was the night before. Mm. So she hasn't even had any time to think about, oh, I need to get changed. This is a whole new day. Um, you know, I need to be in a dressing gown, whatever it is. Yeah, it's been havoc. It, it, it's been havoc. So she's been up all night trying to sort this out. You know, they've they've staged the body down there, made it look like the rope was on it, but that was never really the, the cause of death. And in the end, it's all come down to a bit of pineapple. This theory is actually um, what the CBS, um, they concluded that this was the most likely scenario. It seems that way if you think about it logically. It makes, it makes so much sense. The family seem more suspicious right now. And it gets even weirder because a white family came out with a 14 page open letter saying that the family were actually not being cooperative in the case at all. Said that they were hiding behind the lawyers as well. So they accused their own friends. Their own them. friends. Cause they were, they were literally the night before they, on Christmas evening, they were yes. having dinner with them. Imagine a 14 page letter so saying, it, yeah. stop hiding. So it sounds like the whites were just as suspicious of the family as we are. We already know this stuff that we mentioned earlier, like, you know, the police allowed for the parents to sweep the house. Yep. There was fingerprints of police officers touching the note. They should have been using gloves to do this, yes. right? Not to contaminate loads of things. Absolutely. You had the parent pick up the child and move them. There's so many red flags here. And it's just that like, what is going on? Like, surely this is like basic, procedure when it comes to a crime yeah, scene. It and it's just very poorly handled. Now the first 24 to 36 hours in an investigation like this is absolutely key. And it, they should have interviewed the parents. Yes. Um, but the parents first interview was actually with CNN, right? Two weeks after. If I were a resident of Boulder, I would tell my friend to keep Your baby close to you. There's someone out there. The first interview for the parents is two weeks later. Yeah, with the And it's not even police it's not even a police It's interview. not a police. The first police interview chip came four months after it happened. Four I mean months. how does that even happen? With stuff like that, there has to be something there that makes you think what sort of influence did the family have on yeah. the police. Like, you know, we're talking about a wealthy man. The actual co-lead investigator of the entire case, Steve Thomas, resigned and left a condemning letter saying that the Ramseys had intimidated the district attorney's office. He was completely convinced that the letter was written by Patsy. Right. Um, it was her pad her fingerprints and the handwriting was analyzed by experts and it was very similar to Patsy's. Now, he said that that would normally be enough to implicate someone. But yeah. for some reason, the, DA, the DA's office didn't. And there must have been something going on here because um, Steve Thomas, the guy that resigned, he was absolutely livid when he found out that uh, police reports had been given to the parents before their very first police interview, which was four months after. Why and why? Why? Not only that, let's not forget the gag order on the dispatcher. The dispatcher yeah. admitting Kim. She was given a gag order, and it's just there, like, bro, what is going on? Dodgy business, that's what. Okay, so gonna have to refer to the case file here because it's got quite a bit please, of information. Please, please do, Chip. We gotta be accurate with this stuff. 
Okay, so on the 13th of October, 1999, the district attorney, Alex Hunter, mm -hmm. who was actually apprehensive to begin with to bring in the grand jury. So he, didn't, so he didn't even want a grand jury to begin with? Not okay. at all. He made the public believe the grand jury had been inconclusive, even to those on the inside of the investigation. Right, okay. So he's come out and said the jury don't think that the, that the Ramses have done it. Yes. Right. He lied. On September 15th, 1998, <sighs> the grand jury decided to indict the Ramses. Oh, so the grand jury actually decided, let's indict the Ramses. They mm -hmm. thought, look, the Ramses have done this. All signs are pointing towards the Ramses. Yes. And then the district attorney came out and said, nah, they said it was actually inconclusive. Yes. And just lied. And remember earlier when we mentioned that, the, you know, the Ramses might have had an influence on the DA's office. Yeah, Steve mm -hmm. Thomas Now said it's that. looking like they did. Wow, that is... That's some bit of juicy news That right is there. very, very juicy. I tell juicy. you, the case files always bring serious and, business. And, and, and that was because in um, October, on October 25th in 2013, um, all, obviously back then all the documents were sealed, yes. right? But on that particular date, it's when they were revealed and they could read into them. And that is when that they realized, hold on, the DA said that it was inconclusive, but the jury actually said that yep. they wanted to indict the Ramses. And that is 14 years later. Mate, wow. that is insane. Let's quickly go over just a couple of the other suspects as well. Mm -hmm. um, we got Gary Oliver as okay. well. Tell a me 32 year old about. from Colorado. Yep. Right, and now this bloke was actually found to have had a, like a cutout from a magazine of John Bonet because obviously she did those beauty pageants. So it was this weird cutout on the back um, and anyways, he ended up getting uh, uh, taken in on drug charges. In fact, he's actually still in jail right now um, on other sexual charges. So this guy was just a, just a, a weird, weirdo. weird Donny, but they don't reckon he was the one that killed John Bonet. Okay, so another suspect, we've got John Mark Carr. So in 2006, former school teacher, he yeah. just confessed out of the blue to, you know, the strangling or the killing of John Benet John Ramsey. Benet. So wait, he said, he said it was a strangling, right? And ultimately she didn't die from strangling. Yes. So that obviously puts him in a bit of like a... Well, his confession like, was a bunch of diary entries, a series of them, um, in which he said that strangling John Benet was a love game that went wrong. This sounds just like some twisted fantasy. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know, he, he's looked into the case and then he's just been some weird twisted guy. That's what I think. What do you well, think? No, no, that's exactly what it came down to in the end. They thought it was just a, he was a pedophile looking for a bit a bit of fame. And they actually couldn't verify where he, if he was in Bangkok or Boulder. So in the end, he was just written out, it wasn't him. Next up. Yeah. Linda Hoffman. Okay, wait, so a, a woman suspect. Yes, right? a woman suspect. You're probably wondering, how, who is Linda Hoffman? Why is she a suspect? Yes. So Linda Hoffman was the housekeeper of the family. Um, she actually had a, a spare pair of keys as well, Ooh. which really would lend itself to the intruder theory because yeah, it if does. it wasn't through the window, could they come through the door? Straight the front through the front door? door and lock that, come right in. But Linda actually testified um, in court for like eight hours against Patsy and claimed that Patsy had loads of different like personalities and behaviors and she was just really weird. Not only that, but she claimed that she used to argue with John Bonet all the time. Ooh. But ultimately the evidence just wasn't good enough um, and they, they said it wasn't her. So wasn't Linda. You smashed it, Linda. Well, I guess, I guess so. <laughs> Anyway, there's this bloke called Bill Reynolds, right? And he dressed up as Santa. Yeah. Um, and Patsy had like a gathering of uh, some of the people in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. um, and about a week before um, the murder, obviously it was around Christmas time, so hence why there's a Santa there. Yeah. They claimed that he was given a little bit too much attention to John Bonet. Um, but the rumors of that just sort of shut down real quick because they just said, look, he's just a friendly, a friendly old guy. Imagine dragging like Santa's name through the mud. This man, like, like, like he was what? just trying to give presents to kids. It's like, how, how how is he on a suspects list here? Like, poor Santa. I know, man. Santa's like, name just tarnished. Someone's getting cold for Christmas. So someone is someone definitely is getting, getting cold. cold.
So there we have it. You know, no one has been arrested for this case. Uh, Patsy actually died of ovarian cancer in 2006. Right. Burke is a software engineer and John has remarried. So, so there you go. That is the latest update on it. Not only that, right, but um, Burke has actually been on an interview since. He went on a Dr. Phil and did an interview. Feel free to go and watch that, guys. It was kind of weird and a bit sus. We won't go too much into it, but you can search for it and you can find it. But there we go. That is... The John Benet Unsolved Case. Yep, episode two. Lovely. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a fantastic day, and we will catch you guys on the next case in a bit. Goodbye.